Today we will finish the design challenge relating to the development of a backup geolocation system for GPS. Last time we saw that the ionosphere can have a big impact on propagating VLF signals. In this plot that we looked at, in the region near the antenna, the electric fields attenuate at the same rate in both the daytime and nighttime models. This means that within a few wavelengths of the antenna, the propagation is dominated by the near field radiation characteristics of the transmitter. But beyond that range, the conditions of the ionosphere dominate the propagation characteristics along the ground, since this is an E-field sampled along the ground. We see very different mode interactions in the Earth Ionosphere Waveguide for day versus night conditions. Now at this point in our discussions, we've talked about three of the four sides of the FDTD grid. We talked about the left side, which is azimuthally symmetric. We talked about the top, which is the ionosphere. And we talked about the right side of the grid, which is the thick PML. Before we finish this design challenge, let's discuss the bottom side of the grid, which right now is the surface of the Earth. So far, we've been approximating the surface of the Earth as being flat, and specifically a flat PEC perfect electric conductor where the electric fields are immediately go to zero inside the earth. Although there can be a lot of man-made structures and mountains and various things along the surface of the earth, let's start simple and continue to assume that the surface of the earth is flat, at least along our propagation path. And let's start by considering either a flat ground corresponding to propagation over a continent or a flat ocean surface. So we're going to consider these two along the bottom of our FDTD grid. Here is a plot of the ground and ocean conductivities and relative permittivities around the world at very low frequencies. These values are extracted from the Navy's Long Wave Propagation Code, LWPC, which was constructed over many years to try to predict the propagation of VLF waves in the Earth Ionosphere Waveguide for various applications. Now just because there are values everywhere in this map doesn't mean measurements have been conducted everywhere to estimate the ground parameters. So we can expect that some, or even many of these values, are estimates. Looking at the left map corresponding to conductivities, we can see that there are a wide range of values, ranging from 4 for the oceans to 1 times 10 to the minus 5 for ice and snow. For much of the US, and in the other parts of the world, the ground conductivity is about 1 e to the minus 2 and same as per meter, and that corresponds to green, which you can see here throughout much of the US. And the relative permittivity is 15 for much of the US and other parts of the world. The loss tangent for this type of ground, loss tangent is sigma over omega epsilon, is about 1200, which indicates that the ground in these regions where there's green can be approximated as a good conductor. Because the loss tangent is quite a bit larger than 100. However, while the ground is a good conductor, we shouldn't necessarily assume it can be approximated as a PEC. For a material to be a perfect conductor, we have to be able to assume that the electromagnetic fields inside the material, the ground in this case, are equal to zero, or close enough to zero that we don't need to care about the fields in the material and their impact on the fields outside of the material. But when a material has a finite conductivity, like the values listed here, or 1 e to the minus 2, the electromagnetic fields will diffuse some distance into the material that corresponds to the skin depth of that material. For the ocean, the average conductivity value is 4. Sometimes 3.33 Siemens per meter is used because the conductivity of the ocean can depend on the temperature and the salinity of the water. The relative permittivity of the ocean is 81. And this gives us a loss tangent. So this is for ground. And for the ocean, we get a loss tangent sigma over omega epsilon at 10 kilohertz of about 74 thousand. Comparing this 
with the ground value of 1200, we can see that the ocean is an even better conductor. What about if we go the other direction on this scale of conductivities? Parts of Asia and Canada have conductivities on the order of 1e e to the minus 4, which gives us a loss tangent of 36, which is neither a great con good conductor or a low loss dielectric. This means we can't use the good conductor approximation everywhere around the world. So for this range, we have neither a good conductor nor a low loss dielectric. Well, here, to start simple, let's do start with a good conductor approximation. So for this approximation, we will be able to apply it to this ground, which is over much of the United States and around the world, and also to the ocean. And specifically, let's start by looking at 1e to the minus 2 Siemens per meter. That's the conductivity. And separately, we will also consider propagation over the ocean. Here, sigma is over is 4, or 3.33. So here's a question. How can we account for the finite conductivity and permittivity of the good conductor ground or ocean in our model? Can we just extend our grid in the k direction? So then we could put some sigma values of the ground into the FDTD model. So this is a diagram of our model. And here is the air region. Up here is the ionosphere. Can we just raise up our model and put a transmitter further up in the k direction? So here would be our ground. If so, how far would we need to model into the ground? Or is there a better way we can account for the finite conductivity of the ground and the ocean?